So Amanda, would you like to tell us to you know where 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 you are out at now? Because you you're one of the mother that the, the government took three of your your three children, and uh, and now you're trying to fight back to get get your children back. Where are you at the, this battle now? Um, well, right now I'm looking for a lawyer who practices international law, uh, who knows treaty rights. Um, I've been told that my children are not uh, applicable to the Constitution Act um, of eight, uh, 1982, Section 35, uh, filed a treaty rights <coughs> application and they told me that because my children are not considered Canadian citizens, they have no rights to Section 35. But when I said, okay, well, we're sovereign people, the the children are, the Mohawk are sovereign people because they're not Canadian citizens, so therefore you have no right, this is a federal issue, and they told me no. So basically we're trying to get um, an international lawyer who could come and look at our case. Uh, we've been told treaty rights do not exist in Alberta. Uh, we have to drop our political position, otherwise we'll never get our children back. Uh, this is all over oil pipelines and the tar sands in Alberta. Can you tell us how it started, the harassment and, and the retrieval of your kids? Uh, well, actually it started uh, for treaty, uh, defending treaty rights. The father of my children defends treaty rights. Um, and he went, he goes all over Canada because these treaties have been signed with the Queen, not with Canada. And Canada is completely ignoring that fact. And all the mining, everything, they're just completely stealing all the natural resources from um, all the traditional people of this land with no consequences. Um, and so basically, they want every single native to have a ban card, otherwise they are considered illegal in Canada. And even, um, you know, they've been, there's been talk of, okay, well, where are these people supposed to go? If they're not, they were born here, this is their land. If they're not, if they're illegal here in Canada, then you have to acknowledge the fact that there's a sovereign country, <laughs> the Iroquois Confederacy, right? So, um, pardon? What do you need to get your case back in court? Well, um, right now actually we need funding. We're trying to go to federal court. Uh, we need funding and we need lawyer uh, either to kind of stand behind us and help us fill out the paperwork we need and kind of show us a direction to go in federal court or somebody that just wants to go ahead and make a precedent setting case um, for treaty rights children because now they're taking other treaty rights children based on the fact that of our case. Can you tell us about the fact that uh, you know they took, you know like I'm going to talk with Sandra later but what happened to Sandra when, when she, she um, give birth to uh, her last child on the, on the reserve. What happened to the other children that were born the same year? Uh, they were all apprehended. They went and took all the newborn children um, because they said, well, it's a possibility that this is her baby. And kind of what they say in child welfare over there in Alberta is once you're in the system, you're in the system. There's no way to like, oh, whoops, we, we made a mistake and we're going to give you your children back. Um, they just basically make the parents go through all these, um, you know, loopholes and, you know, jump this high and go over here. And if you don't do that, well, you're not a, you don't love your children and we're just going to take them from you. So these, these children have been taken off their, their parents for a false reason for the last 18 months. And, and they're still hoping their kids will be back and, and that you don't think they will? Um, well, we are always going to carry that hope. Um, we have been told that no, they're, uh, it's the equivalent of being a crown ward with no contact. And even though they don't have any reason to um, suspect, like our parenting skills are fine. They don't have anything to say that we're bad parents. Just the fact that our political position is the reason that we're putting our children under emotional neglect. So what is your political position that makes you, puts you in so much trouble? Um, I'm actually looking towards having a future for the children and my children's children and their children's children's children. Um, so the oil pipelines is not good for the future of anybody's children. And basically that's my position. I'm a mother and I look to the future 
to secure a future for my children and their children. And the pipelines is the complete opposite of that. Uh, because the pipeline will make it easy to, 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 to get the, the tar sand and will make more more tar sand uh, mining in Alberta. So that's that's the point. Like if you fight the pipeline, you, you get less less mining of tar sand. Is that the, your point? Yes, exactly. And that's where all their money is in Alberta. They don't really have any other natural resources that they can exploit at this point in time. Um, so that's their biggest natural resource. That's their biggest money maker. And um, they don't want to give it up anytime soon. So you would like people to, to, to go on the link below this video? We have a link below this video. There is a petition that is calling for an inquiry into the practices of child and family services. Uh, we would be we would appreciate very much if you could sign the petition we can appreciate any help with funding any legal advice you can give us any connection we are happy to do more interview provide more detailed information we have lots of court paperwork transcripts to show thank you. so any help we appreciate thank, thank you, you. Sandra.